Today, I'll be doing something I've never done before. I'll be sitting on the other side of the easel, being painted by one of the UK's best portrait artists. And that's not just my opinion, as he's the recipient of the Ontage Gold Medal, the UK's most prestigious portrait prize. So it's an immense privilege to be painted by him, but I'm also a little nervous to see what he makes of me. I'm Andy James. I'm a portrait painter and I'm here today to paint my friend and fellow artist Alex Tavares. Alex may have already mentioned that he's a little bit anxious about the prospect of me painting him, but probably not quite as anxious as I am about painting Alex himself. So I have a single blue, I have one yellow, two reds and two earth colours. So the white is a titanium white, very opaque, very solid, French ultramarine, gentle, transparent blue, very good for face painting, it doesn't intrude too much and it mixes extremely well with my reds, especially my cool red, which is a magenta. I have a lemon yellow, I have a cadmium red, so a nice bright solid, and my two earths, yellow ochre, raw umber. So the yellow ochre, very good for mixing and joining all the colors together, and the raw umber is very good at knocking purity out of certain mixes and obviously helps to give a, a really strong dark if you need it. Painting medium, just a little bit of turpentine. And then I've got a range of what I would call very middle to slightly lower middle range brushes, all hog hair. So filberts and round, a couple of flats in a, a variety of ranges. And I'll probably only use about three, three or four. Palette knife, I will occasionally paint with that in demos, but I, I use it a lot in my more sort of developed work. And a rag, that's about it. Just a fraction, ten, and back in between those two. That's about it. Okay, like that. So, do you, do you normally start off by drawing in charcoal, like m mapping out? Got to start drawing with either charcoal or a pencil. It just speeds things up. Ultimately, it all gets covered. Yeah. in no time, but I need to just get my general proportions and divisions more or less, I suppose, to set the whole structure within the canvas. And what surface are you painting on? Here I'm painting on MDF, a bit of uh, um, PVA glued and then gessoed MDF board. So Very it's very convenient. It's not the, the most wonderful material to paint on, but you get a lot of immediate response from the paint. Whereas if you paint on canvas, it can take a little bit to get that paint to be able to sort of sit nicely on the mm. canvas. So with an MDF board, everything sits up. So just for any explanation as to what I am doing right at the beginning is, I don't fully know. I never want to fully know at the beginning. I, I've got a board, there's nothing on the board other than a few scratched lines. And I've got to get some of this paint onto the board to begin to make some sense. So mustn't paint too thickly, otherwise it's very hard to adjust. And I need to partially think, I've never done this before. I've got to stay completely tuned into what I'm perceiving. I'm going to make approximate measurements of everything. Nothing's a keeper. Just explore colours and values. Not going to go to the very highest or lowest values. All the key stuff is in the middle. I've been gifted a nice amount of time to paint today, so I'm not going to rush to try and block in really quickly. But I am blocking in, I'm putting broad uh, sort of masses in. And my main concern is first of all, tonal accuracy. So I don't want to be missing the mark by too much. And also addressing little local color variations. And then there's thirdly, the, the temperature shift. There is variation in temperatures because I've got two light sources. Well, two dominant light sources, then ambient stuff going on as well. Got a dominant, so sort of more or less daylight balanced. So I've marked out with pencil, give myself these little boundaries, but as you can see, 
they disappear very, very quickly. It's just like little initial takeoff points. And then try and let the painting refine divisions and demarcations in the actual painting process. So boundaries of all kinds matter. So we've got the external boundary as well. So just put a little bit of a, a blocking in green just to make the optics simpler. So I can see the structure as quickly as possible. So it's rough, really rough, but intentionally so. There's no prettiness involved in it. So I'm looking at the sort of architecture of things first, the big sort of meta shapes. Oops, excuse me. So I try to incorporate a sense of painting architecturally first before I really get into the idea that it's face anatomy. So just shapes. Just shapes. In fact, shapes really ought to dominate and prescribe the actions, I think, as long as possible. So there's a degree of neutrality in the colour here. Uh, I'm not going to jump into any um, extremity or sort of amplification yet. Just get the gist of it before I try to push any buttons of amplification. It's all about the, the overall structure and colouring locking together and being coherent. That definitely is my major concern because if there isn't coherence throughout the whole thing it doesn't matter how good little episodes are it's not going to pull together brush through forms not to worry about how they impact upon one another so at this stage you'd say you would you say you were still blocking in the larger shapes yes it's still blocking in mentality but it yeah. actually the byproduct of this larger scale blocking in is that it actually starts to acquire more naturalistic viable description now mm. so the the adjustments are still broad but they're a little bit more accurate yeah so it pulls the the head into a more descriptive form now it's not so sort of grossly abstracted mm. but you're you're already kind of putting in some quite strong color notes yeah i i, I would definitely want to sort of find all the the constituent parts um and and see them make sense before i begin to dress it up a bit mm. uh, boundaries measurements yeah it's got to make sense really got to make overall connected sense how do you choose your colors or where do you the, the sort of the stronger color notes that you put in i guess if color has been employed successfully and seems to be an integral successful part of the work it's where the relationships are heightened further in a sort of consolidating way so it's it's finding a value, maybe relatively neutral, so logical, and then amplifying it, making it work a little bit harder towards a more extreme expression. So it's the take, having a license to exaggerate, mm. but only to sort of tell the truth a little bit more. So if you go into the zone of reckless, indulgent, wild colouring, then all you do is unpick dramatically the opposite way to the way you'd want to go. So it's, it's all about heightening a sort of truth, maybe, hopefully. Key thing is you want it to look like a revelation, as if, because vision is, experience should be a revelation. It should be a sense of wonder. And if you don't get something of that, I think that's a betrayal then of, of what art and life is about, which is just things that are just overwhelming, or at least deeply arresting and beautiful and moving, or even more just excitement. Something's exciting to look at. Your first goal is to say, or to show the, the viewer and prove to them <laughs> successfully that you were excited by it. So there's a lot more micro adjustment of coloring and with it boundary edges being refined, which I guess is the more subtle stage of lightness. So forms start to find different sort of rhythms through the head. Well, I think where you put a refinement is where you're telling the viewer to look. Mm. So they're little instructional markers to say this is important over this. So why do you like portraiture? Mm. That's a great question. Mm. I mean, in, superficially, like a lot of these questions, you could say, 
Well, I just I found them fascinating. Mm. But it's, of course, it's why. Why is it fascinating? Why not something else? Mm. Why should something have such a, a sort of control of your imaginative activity? Um, and I've, I've painted portraits now for 35 years. So there's obviously something deep within me that, that is attached to the idea of painting portraits. But what is that? And I suspect it's in the painting of it that you find your answers. So it's probably non-verbal. Yeah. But there's obviously fascination, compulsion, and some sense of reward in it, some sense of self-discovery. So, well, what do you think makes a successful portrait? My being deeply impressed by what I would say is a really successful portrait is highly personal, but I think there's something about it being a magnificent painting as much as it's a magnificent study of the inner life of the person and the expression of the exterior reality too, and them all somehow collaborating together beautifully. So there's a sympathy in the style, the inner life of the the person depicted and the, of course, not forgetting the artist. Because there's always this, the, the sense that a portrait is a self-portrait. Style seems to um, be so personal that it's like an internal life of the artist that's making it. So a Freud always looks like a self-portrait of a Freud to an extent, where he uses the subject in a sense express his state. But I think beautiful image, powerful construction, sympathy for the subject and an honest expression of that inner condition of the artist as well. And then, so you're putting details in the eyes? Just edges really, just, yeah, you've got the broad colours. Yeah. And you don't use any smaller brushes? No, no, whatever I can find with this yeah. or not at all. Oh, not like that little one there. No, that, that would be to draw a line or two, but it, if I can't do it with the edge that's already yeah. in there, I don't think it should go in for me oh, because it just changes the whole pace and yeah. spirit of it, which is the immediacy, the um, slight loss of control, I suppose. Oh, wow. I reckon you made me look younger. <laughs> I tried to tell the truth, so there's plenty yeah. of youth, plenty of youth <laughs> there. That's what I was worried about. I was going, oh, he's going to make me too old. Like, that's what all my sitters say anyway. But... Here we are, we're at the end. Well, it's definitely a very interesting experience for me, having painted so many people, to finally get painted myself and then see how another artist, and particularly such a good one, sees me instead of what I usually experience in the mirror. Does it feel like you, does it, it does. look like I you? Definitely does it... re I definitely recognise myself in that. As a portrait, I'm happy. Good. As a painting, I'm happier. I love it, I think it's great. I went for painting ahead of likeness. Yeah. So I would always say, if you want a good sketch, if you want a good sort of expression of something, you've got to be bold, and you've got to be willing to compromise somewhere because mm. you can't have the absolute precision and the freedom. So it's somewhere in between the two you find you're starting to sort of compile the information. So it's really, where do you want to go in that spectrum? So yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you, Alex. It's been a real joy, absolute memorable event. And thank you for the fantastic. invitation. And please let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thank you.